Welcome back to our learning course. In this lesson, we will talk about the short-term memory in animals. We will look at a method to assess short-term memory called the Delayed Match to Sample Experiment, or DMTS for short. This is described in the timeline. At the beginning of each trial, a stimulus is presented on a computer screen or in some other way. This is called the sample stimulus, and in our example, it's a white circle. After a couple of seconds, the sample stimulus is removed and nothing is shown for a while. This is called the delay period. At the end of the delay, two stimuli appear, called the choice stimuli. In this example, we have a black circle and a white circle as choice stimuli. The animal's task is to choose the choice stimulus that is identical to the sample. How an animal chooses in practice depends on the species and the experimental setup. For example, birds will usually be trained to peck at the sample, while a monkey can touch the sample on a touch screen. The way a DMTS experiment is used to measure short-term memory is by varying the delay interval. Making this interval longer means asking the animal to remember the sample for a longer time, which, as we will see in a minute, becomes more and more difficult. Here is a video of a starling in a DMTS experiment. The experiment requires the bird to first peck at the sample, which is displayed always on the center key. This is to make sure that the animal has actually seen the sample. In this case, the sample can be a red or a green light. After a short delay, the choice stimuli appear, again red and green, and the starling has to peck the correct one. This starling is doing pretty well on average. In this lesson, we will look at how different species perform in the DMTS task. Our main source will be the paper indicated here at the left, which I wrote a few years ago with Johan Lind and Magnus Enquist. Let's see in practice how DMTS is used to measure short-term memory. The first thing to do is to measure the animal's performance when the delay is zero, that is, when the choice stimuli appear as soon as the sample disappears. For example, here are some results from B. There was no zero delay condition in the experiments that we found, but at one second delay, the bees chose correctly about 75% of the time. Maybe it would have been 80% or something like that at zero delay. If they were choosing randomly, they would have scored around 50% since there were only two choices. So 75% is quite a bit above a chance, but not perfect. At this point, we increase the delay interval and see how the animals do. What happened with the bees is that they got progressively worse as the delay increased. This is the typical result, as we will see. We can quantify the duration of the memory by looking for the point where the initial performance has worsened halfway towards chance level. In the case of bees, we see this halfway point is about 60% correct, which is reached for a delay of about 3-4 seconds. Because bees are now half as good as they were with the shortest delay, we say that the half-life for their memory is 3 to 4 seconds. We can also see that the bees didn't seem to remember anything after about 10 seconds, at which point they had dropped to chance level. You might wonder how one runs an experiment with bees. In this case, people use a simple maze with a single choice, called the Y-maze from its shape. The sample stimulus is displayed at the entrance and the choice stimuli are visible at the end of each arm of the maze. If the bee goes to the correct choice stimulus, she finds a drop of sugar water. The delay can be increased by making the initial segment of the maze longer, so that the bee has to travel for some time before she can see the comparison stimuli. In this figure, the initial segment is as short as possible, but you can imagine a Y shape with the downward stroke getting longer and longer to increase the delay. Let's look now at a few examples of results from the NTS experiment. These are all the data from pigeons that we managed to collect, almost 20 different studies, each using a few values of the delay. We can see that pigeon memory declines pretty much at a constant rate in all experiments. The horizontal axis in this graph, as in the other ones for bees, is logarithmic, means that what looks like a constant rate actually represents an exponentially fast decay of memory. What is remarkable in all these experiments is that they all resulted in pretty much the same decay pattern. That is, the performance of pigeons is very stable and very consistent, which makes us confident that the results are robust. No one has ever succeeded in training a pigeon to keep in mind something for more than a couple of minutes. These data are from rats. 
they show the same consistency as pigeons, more or less, but their memory shows a different pattern, where the memory is very good at short delays, showing almost no decay, but then it declines rather steeply. This is in contrast with the pattern we saw in pigeons, in which the rate of decay was pretty much constant. These data are from chimpanzees. They are kind of all over the place, with some studies showing a very poor memory of about 10 seconds, and other studies showing a few minutes of memory, or at least very little decay within a few minutes. We will see shortly how to interpret this fact. Our last example is from dolphins. It shows that it can do pretty well, keeping things in mind for a few minutes. But the data is almost as noisy as for the chimpanzee. Now, a great thing about the DMTS experiment is that it has been tried out with very many species. This graph is about zero delay performance. To the left, you can read the name of the species the data come from. The number refers to the number of data points for each species, that is the number of experiments. Each dot is the performance observed in a particular experiment. Each circle is the median for that species. The diamonds refer to experiments that use a slightly different procedure called the titration, but the difference is not important here. The 93% line is the median value across all experiments, which means that if you disregard the differences between species, animals can do zero delay match the sample pretty well. But what does the graph say about the differences between species? The species are ordered based on performance. We can see that rats are at the top, with more than 90% correct in every single experiment. Then we have dolphins, sea lions, rhesus monkeys, and so on. The poor bees are second last. So does this mean that rats are the stars of zero delay memory? Actually, no. It is easy to misinterpret this graph if you don't know a bit of the backstory about laboratory experiments with animals. Rats, pigeons, and rhesus macaques are the most used laboratory species for mammals, birds, and primates, respectively. These are the species that we know best how to train. If a rat or a pigeon can learn something, we pretty much know how to teach it and get a good performance. Other species are not used as much for experiments, and this matters because each species has its own quirks and requires its own accommodations to perform well. So the graph is not saying that rats can learn this task better than dolphins, chimpanzees, and dogs. It just says that we can train rats very well. In fact, if you look at the graph, all species that are in the bottom half have been tested only once or twice. Some of these species are known to be good learners, like crows and dogs. There is no reason to doubt that these animals would do much better if trained appropriately. The only exception is perhaps the bees. There is a lot of expertise in training bees, but I have spoken with bee researchers and they tell me that in any particular task, it's hard to get more than 75 or 80% correct from the bees. Let's now look at the data for memory half-life. This is a crucial quantity when measuring short-term memory. The graph has the same format as the previous one, but the horizontal axis is now memory half-life in second instead of percent correct. The median over all species is about 30 seconds, but there is a large variation between bees with about 5 seconds and capuchin monkeys with more than 5 minutes. Part of this variation depends on training issues as noted before. It is still true that species tested more often have a higher best score on memory half-life. At the same time, rats are no longer number one, even if we know how to train them. So probably the estimate of a memory lasting between 30 and 45 seconds for rats is not far off the mark. We see that dogs, dolphins, the sea lions, and the pinion jay, a bird, do better than rats, but we are not sure about these estimates because there isn't a lot of data on these species. For example, all dolphin data come from the same two dolphins, tested in successive experiments over many years. Capuchin monkeys have the highest score over five minutes, but they also scored as low as 10 seconds in other tests. So it's fair to say that we are not sure what's going on there. It is possible that mammals do on average better than birds, as only mammals have recorded memory half-life scores above one minute. It's also true, on the other hand, that the only bird species that has been extensively studied is the pigeon so it might not be fair to conclude something about birds in general. Pigeons should also get the benefit of the doubt themselves, because as a research species, they are often used in experiments designed to challenge their memory rather than to help them get the best possible performance. A last thing to note is that primates 
in general don't seem to stand out as having much better memory than other animals. The primate species surveyed here are marked with uh, crosses, and you see that the crosses are all over the place, from the top to the bottom of the graph. Our conclusions are that animal short-term memory is quite limited in time, and there might not be big differences between species, at least when it comes to birds and mammals. But these conclusions should wait until more data become available. At this point, you may wonder whether humans are any better. How is our short-term memory? There are the MTS studies with humans, and generally they show that we can remember things for many hours or even days. But I let you judge by yourself. At the beginning of this lesson, I showed a colored circle on screen for a second. I never talked about it, and you might have wondered what it was about. Now, do you remember the color of that circle? Was it red or blue? If you remember, you just did much better than any non-human animal ever tested and without any training or knowledge that you would be asked about that color. This lesson is over. Here are some suggestions on what to study next. Happy learning to everyone.